Hi everyone. For people who don't know me, I'm Janine Tanner from Envirosure, the Managing Director. We are your complete environmental impairment insurance solution. We specialise in impairment insurance for transporters, storage of dangerous goods and potential pollutants. We've decided to use an online platform to engage with your brokers to do some training during this COVID pandemic and this will also help you qualify for your CBD points. I'm Adele Hartley, the General Manager of Envirosure. In this presentation, we'll be discussing non-hazardous goods and the impacts that they can have on the environment. There's a very common misconception that only goods with a UN number would pose a risk to the environment. However, many goods that don't carry UN numbers are viewed as potential pollutants and can have significant impacts on the environment. In our case studies, we'll be going through a lime claim, which is classed as an agricultural non-hazardous good, and also cooking oil, which is often viewed as non-hazardous, thus not insured. However, the cleanup response is the same as if it was in hydrocarbon. In case study one, we're going to review a truck that was transporting lime that crashed down a very steep ravine. As the truck crashed through the barrier line down the ravine, the product spread all over the property, which was owned by a farmer. At the bottom of the ravine, there was a low flowing river that was now severely contaminated with lime. The lime had spread through quite a vast area of the ravine, which was on a farmer's property. So we now had impact onto various land areas and the river. Due to the size of the spillage, we had various response teams working on different aspects of the job. We had teams that were dealing with the river impact, teams that were sorting the product. We partnered with the GRT insurer to try to retain any good product that was left behind, as well as the teams that were focusing on the land contamination aspect. Due to the extensive area of land that was impacted, we bought in yellow plant equipment to help with the swift removal of the product. The product was stockpiled in skips whilst we reviewed the various options that were available. With lime products, you may in certain circumstances be able to repurpose them. However, with this product, due to the nature of it and its grade, it was not deemed feasible for any agricultural use. As it became evident that disposal was our only option, we started to review the various options that were available. First prize would have been a local landfill. However, no local landfills were willing to accept the product. Thus, we had to look at the Haschem landfill for disposal, which obviously carry significantly higher costs. We sourced various options from different disposal facilities. Looking at the location of the spill, would it be more feasible for us to bring the product up to Holzfontein or back down into KZN? Various options were weighed up and measured and it was viewed more economical to bring the product back to KZN for disposal. On this claim, the bulk of the costs were attributed towards the transport and disposal costs in comparison to the on-site cleanup. Often transporters of lime and other lower grade agricultural products do not even have environmental cover. They assume that the product has a low value and if there is a spillage, the local community will accept the product back. However, in this instance, this was not feasible at all and this claim ended up costing over 500,000 Rand. Our second incident is a cooking oil truck that had a load shift and most of the product was lost onto the side of the road. In this instance, the truck did not overturn. However, due to the load shift, the entire load was lost. The product was already packaged for commercial use and was 25 litre drums of cooking oil. The packaging on a vast majority of the product had really been impacted. Thus, the cooking oil had spread quite a significant area, flowing down a channel. The area was extremely remote, as well as being ecologically sensitive. There was quite a number of feinbos, which affects the way in which we would deal with the excavation. The cooking oil pooled quite significantly in certain areas. To make matters worse, it rained quite heavily overnight, which caused the product to migrate, as well as the soil turn into a marsh-like substance. As the responders were excavating, the product kept resurfacing. Extensive on-site excavation was done. However, due to the feinbos and other sensitive receptors, only manual excavation was permitted. Environmental authorities in the Cape are extremely involved and very strict when it comes to protocols, especially if there is protected fauna and flora. 
Due to this, environmental experts were appointed to ensure that the correct protocols were followed and the rehabilitation process was successful. Landfill costs were once again a big factor in this incident. The heavily saturated soil that had turned into a marsh clay-like substance had to be disposed of at a hazardous landfill. One of the main factors on this claim was the transport and disposal costs. Due to the remote location of the site, we also had to incur additional costs for the transportation and accommodation of the response teams. These claims highlight that non-hazardous goods can have a significant impact on the environment, as well as the costs associated with these claims. The misconception that non-hazardous goods can be taken to general landfills, do not require extensive rehabilitation, or that the products can just simply be left on the side of the road is completely incorrect. The authorities are getting more and more involved in these incidents, and they are issuing directives onto transporters even for non-hazardous goods. Thank you for joining us. Please read the articles, answer the few questions to obtain your CBD points and please look out for our next webinars which will be following shortly. You're welcome to contact us if you have any questions or queries.